kind of guy who got literally if my sister brought him home, I'd be terrified. <laughs> but he- but- Welcome back to the Irish Bears show. It's great to be back and talk Bears football. <laughs> it's a win, that, man. It's a win. Uh, <laughs> it's you a look win. like that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a win, but ha, have, has there ever been any more games that where a win has felt like a loss? Because that one was uh, that was that was a tough one to watch. It really was. It really was. It, it just I just feel like it was getting progressively worse and worse. Um, but the defense, fair play, the defense, they, they stood up and they kept us in that game the whole time. If it wasn't for them, you know, having that bounce back game today, we wouldn't have been in that at all. Like that, that would have just been the Texans would have run, run right over us. Um, you know, Roquan Smith, fair play to him. I called him out before the game, but I also said if Roquan Smith has a good game and if he hopefully gets an interception, then we might we might be looking at a good a good day for the defense, and that's exactly what happened. Um, so I'm delighted in the sense that he had a much better game. The defense at times looked better, but big worries on offense for me still. Like there's a lot a lot to be concerned about there at the minute. Yeah, completely. There's a there is just a lot to worry about because there was a lot that was bad. There were some good things that we can that we'll talk about, but Look, the starting point before we get into a lot of what I guess a lot of people are going to be talking about over the next week, really, until the Bears play again. Uh, there was two key injuries that were that happened very early on in the game. David Montgomery goes down, doesn't look good. Looks like he's going to be out for a number of weeks. Um, and then Byron Pringle makes one catch and then suddenly is is gone. <laughs> so. He he came in for a quick catch and then is off. Money injured, well spent. So. Him. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, this is it. Like you know, obviously we've talked about what a, a Bears team would look like without David Montgomery for a while now, and we're going to get to see that over the next couple of weeks if he's if he's going to be out for an extended period of time. But you know, we spoke about how the running back is. You know, you've you've just got to get him make it work. And Khalil Herbert came in and Jesus, like great display from him you know what was 180 yards or something ridiculous and two touchdowns or you know the guy showed out stepped up and and dragged the offense along with him <laughs> no one else is doing anything it was all on him you know so uh fair play to him uh but hopefully uh, monty's injury isn't too bad as for um pringle i mean he's contributed to pretty much nothing since he's came here anyway he's likely going to be out again for another couple of weeks so you know, there's not really much we can say about whether it's a, a big loss or not because he's done pretty much nothing since he got here anyway. So, um, but I'm more concerned about Montgomery and where that's going. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I'm going to um, bring in Jeff now. Uh, we've had him on a couple of times on show. It's always good fun. So, uh, yeah, we're going to just let him come in here. Jeff, how are you doing, my friend? You know, boys, uh, I've been doing this 17 years. I've been writing about this team for 17 years. And it's the same fucking story every year. And I'm tired of it, and I'm bored with it. Uh, listen, great team win today. They played good defense. They ran the ball great. They got a great kicker. But I, I mean, I'm optimistic, and I've been and I've been rooting for this kid. But that's not an NFL quarterback. And when you can't hit that throw to commit in the first half, backup quarterbacks can hit that. And I almost tweeted it, and I didn't. I would have got slaughtered. They're going to get to a point here as a staff where they're going to be saying to each other, does Simeon give us a better chance to execute an offense? Forget about whatever the dream of this offense is. Fields can't run whatever that is. 
So if they want to run whatever this Getsy offense is, they they got to put a quarterback in there who understands pressures, who could read defenses, who will set his feet and throw, who can be accurate, who he just doesn't look like he has any awareness of what's happening on the field. And at two and one now, there are guys in that locker room who think this team's going to win a lot of games. And they're going to have a, 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 a buoyant locker room today where there's going to be guys like Roquan. Oh, looks like lost we them. may have lost them. Let's, let's see if we can fix up the connection and then we'll we'll continue it Um, because, yeah, even in there it looks a little frozen. But, yeah, I, I think he's right. And we there's going to come a time where we're going to have to have a serious conversation about Justin Fields. And because, I, like he was mentioning, it just wasn't good. It's... It's looked worse on a week by week basis, and that's yeah. definitely not something that you want. Let me see if we can fix this up here. Uh, we should yeah. be good. I got a, we got we got a storm hit in New York right now, so it's like everything is screwed up. But my my, my right. general point is is just I'm not I'm not ruling it out. I'm not saying this kid doesn't have an opportunity to be a, a an NFL quarterback, but I just don't have a, a lot of data points that tell me guys who have these flaws. In year two, I don't care how many starts he's had. Guys who are going to be top quarterbacks complete these passes. Guys who are going to be top quarterbacks recognize when, when there's a defensive player bearing down on them and the whole stadium is screaming, look, there's a guy behind you. Like, it, the, the awareness isn't there. And I think this team can go out this year and win nine games. They, they might even be able to win ten games. They cannot do that with him playing quarterback like this. And if they're willing to spend the entire season and throw the season away to, to, to quote unquote develop him, which there's no guarantee of that ever happening, uh, they're going to risk losing a lot of fans on this one because this team is not bad. They're just not. They have a te- – oh, I won't say that. They have – they are getting terrible quarterback play. That's it. That game should have been 31 to 10 today. That was not a competitive game. The Bears ran like Wisconsin used to run in the 1970s. Like they, the Bears could have run for 500 yards today. That game should not have been close. And it was only close because they have a huge deficiency at the most important position in sports. Again, we're here again. And I just hope this group recognizes that quickly because I don't want to be in year four of Trubisky again. I don't want to be throwing seasons away in hopes that something's going to click. Right now, Justin Fields is not close. And all his defenders on Twitter can say anything they want. It isn't the play calling. It isn't the offensive line who have been really good through three games. They are bulldozing people on that offensive line. And it isn't the weapons because I'm seeing the tape and the guys are open. So right now, if they don't fix quarterback, this season is going to peter out quickly at about six or seven wins. They can win more, but if he doesn't play better, they've got to start thinking about just give him some time on the bench to watch. It might be helpful. They did this with Terry Bradshaw, but they're going back a ways. But they did this with Terry Bradshaw in his, in his first year. They said, all right, they benched him. They said, go watch for a bit. It's, it's all moving too fast for you. It is clearly moving too fast for Fields. I've never been this despondent after a win. Never. Because that was a coaching staff that shares my, my belief. I'm telling you, they did not want to let Justin Fields throw a pass. They would have no. done everything in their power to have him throw no passes in that – Oh, all right, last rant, because I'm on a rant here. The <laughs> end of that first half, you've got 40 seconds. You have the ball at the 30. You have three timeouts. Is there any other team in the NFL that doesn't try to get points there with three timeouts? Any team. Lovey Smith was calling timeouts. Lovey Smith would have gone all in there with Davis Mills. So if the staff is that afraid of this kid, you have to wonder what is the point in playing him right now. Sit him down for a bit. Let him learn. Bring him back out in November if you have to. But like right now, playing him, I just don't see it serving any purpose. Yeah, I completely right. agree to the point of if you're not even trying when, like you said, there's 40 seconds left at the end of the first half and you've Lovey Smith looking like he's coaching for the Bears <laughs> by, calling a, by calling a timeout. But if you don't trust the guy to go for it, well then I don't know what you're doing because at the end of the day, like – you either believe in them or you don't. If you don't believe in them, well, then you need to, like you said, you need to 
put your team in the best opportunity because I've said this all along and I've been talking to the guys in our, in our group chat, at what point in time do the bears, are the bears going to seriously consider that? Because you've said it before, he's one of the few players in this team. This, this regime doesn't have any links to, if he doesn't play well, he does. They're going to look, if he's the quarterback, if he doesn't play well, they're going to have a very high draft pick. And we know with, what's probably coming in the league this year by just looking at what's going in college. He's, he's really has to play for his job right now because like I said, he's they're in trouble here because I, like I'm, one of the things that you mentioned there, we started off this show with, I've never felt a win feel like so much like a loss. It's, it's yeah. the weirdest thing. And like yeah. you said, it's, it's the same story that the defense bails you out when the defense wasn't even particularly good either. And yet they're able to bail they're able to bail you out. And I think the only place where I probably disagree is I don't think this team is good enough to win nine or ten football games because there's too many deficiencies at different parts of the field. The one thing I don't agree with other people on is I don't think this offensive line is pretty bad. <clears throat> I think they're they're not. They're at least average to above average, which is kind of what you look for in the league because there's so many bad offensive lines. And that kind of puts it even full circle for Justin. Is like, there such a, a thing? Is there such a thing as a bad offensive line if a team runs for two hundred and seventy-five yards? Like no. that, that just doesn't compute to me. Here's what I'll say about the defense: they're a modern defense, right? In the modern NFL, if you can hold your opponents to between seventeen and twenty-four points, you should win a lot of those games. And today they went out there. I mean, who were who was playing corner for them today? I mean, Kyler had a really nice second half, struggled a bit in the first half. But you're talking about kind of scrub corners out there. They still held the opponent to 20 points. And they, that, that's all you need to do. But in this NFL, I, I listen, if they're going to run like this, run the ball like this, they're going to be in every single game they play if they run the ball like this. But you saw what happened against a top defense like Green Bay when you are required to throw or when you get down in these games. See, they never got down big in this game. They got down two scores in this game. They had no chance to win it. We know that because they did not have the ability to get under center and throw the football down the field. Every pass that he completed today felt flukish to me. That's not fair. Believe me, I know that's not fair, but they felt flukish to me. It felt like he had almost all his completions had a receiver with his back to the, to the end zone, standing there staring at him waiting for the football. What that tells me is he's not throwing anybody open. He waits no. to see a guy in open space, and then he delivers the football. That is not good. And that's the kind of thing that's very hard to coach. That's confidence, and that's accuracy. I don't see either from them. So, listen, they're not going to win anywhere near nine or ten games if he's the quarterback, if he plays a like quarterback like this. Nowhere near. Um, I just wonder if this coaching staff isn't going to have a serious moment this week where they say, is he better served watching for a few weeks? You know, Giants next week, they've got the Redskins and, and, a, and a, a Patriots team is not very good, but Belichick is going to embarrass Fields. He'll just figure out a way. Uh, this guy is not close to being ready to play NFL football right now. And the sooner they acknowledge that, that's that might be the best thing for him right now is to just let's fucking dial this back, sit down and watch this game for a bit, and we're bringing you back in six weeks. We know Trevor's not the answer, but we're, in six weeks we're bringing you back in that's when you got to be ready to prove to us you are the guy. I don't think they'll do it because the PR and the media around it would just be so hard on him. And it's in this day and age with all the media on the NFL, it's really hard to do. Uh, but I don't see him improving on the field. I don't see him getting better week to week uh, looking the way he looks now. I think this will get worse for him before it gets better. And ultimately, you know, he almost got hurt today. That play, that run to the sideline. What is he doing? I mean, there, there is a play where either throw it away, throw it downfield, or get yourself somewhere safe. And he's half in, he's half out, he's tiptoeing the sideline to get an extra yard, and he gets hit. He's a, he's a guy who has lost touch with the football game. And that's not something that comes back easily. And I'd be, I, I'm, I'm terribly sad that we're here. But this today felt like Trubisky against the Saints a couple of years ago, where at the end of that game I said, that's not the guy. And I hope I'm wrong. But I watched it. That, that guy I saw play football today, that did not look like a guy who's going to evolve into a top-tier NFL quarterback. I just felt that there was too much going on in his head. 
you know, like, it, it was it, it was, it was, confusing himself, he was looking at all these different options. How many times did we, did we look at the replay um, or, or whatever, and you've seen guys standing open, right? Fair enough, they're only yeah. six yards yeah. down from him, but there's a guy open, throw the ball to him and let yeah. him make plays. Don't oh. rely, don't don't put it all on your shoulders and say, oh, well, I've got to fucking throw a 40-yard bomb down the, down the road or or this is just going to shit, or I've got to pick up the ball and I've got to run for 25 yards. That doesn't have to happen all the time. Take the take the, 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 the pressure valve release option and, and just get the completion. It's better than going three and out. This is the problem. You look at our third down uh, conversions uh, on offense, it was like 28% up until this game. And that's because in first and second down, we're not getting enough. So we're getting, we're always in third and long, third and 10, mm-hmm. third and 12. You're not doing enough. So it's just a case of him saying, listen, I don't have to do this all of them. And to be honest with you, the coaches should be telling him this already. And if they are telling him mm-hmm. and he isn't doing it, then that's an issue. He, he, he needs to he needs to get this thing out of his head that he's got to have it all on him and he's got to push it. But you're right, Jeff, I don't think they're going to, they're going to take him out at all. Because as you say, no. it would just look bad. Um, yeah. if, you know, in, in an ideal world, it would, that would be the, that would be the a possible solution. Um, however, it's not going to happen. So it's got to be on him to just get better. He's just got to get better. You can't blame the receiving core because they haven't been given an option to to, pat, to catch the ball. You can't blame the offensive line because they've been holding up well. You can't really blame the play calling either because arguably it's been okay. The play calling today, though. You know, we've seen third and sixteen, and he's going for a, a a handoff kind of thing, and you're like, "That's a daft play play call, and it is right." But that shows you that they didn't have confidence <laughs> that he was going to be able to do what he needed to do, and that that in itself is a huge red flag at week three of the season. Tony, it's not a daft play call. It's what 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 other choice does he have? You Plus can't let this yeah, you can't let this kid go back there and throw games away, and that's where they are with him right now. It's not a question of Listen, if you watch Mahomes and Allen play, I, I don't think a lot of like specific team fans watch everybody else. They do a lot of underneath stuff, right? Josh Allen gets rid of the ball fast and, and repeat. Hit the hit the open guy, move it. Get six, get five, get four, whatever that is. Fields does none of that, and the guys are there to throw the ball to. But these play calls that are being criticized, everyone, there's a belief system that's in place around Justin Fields, that Justin Fields is fully ready and all he needed in the spring were some weapons. And now all he needs is the play caller. Guys, the truth of the matter is, it's not there. He is not ready. He is not a couple of play uh, outside players or a couple of play calls away from being a top NFL quarterback. He's not even close to being a bottom third NFL quarterback. Right now, he's probably the worst starting quarterback in the sport. So we're not close with this kid yet. And right now, they're trying to do something very difficult on that sideline. They're trying to win. And they know that they have to sort of bring this kid along. And that's not possible to do. Right now, you are not going to put the game on Justin Fields' shoulders and win. That's not possible. He can't do that. So they are trying to call a game that is super conservative. They want to keep it close. They're going to make a big play here or there on defense. They had a great kicker. They're going to run the ball. And if they can't win that way, which they couldn't in Green Bay, they're going to lose. And they know that now. So it, it's a it's a, it's a a tightrope that sideline is trying to walk because – there are, there are 50 other guys on that on that sideline, in that locker room, who want to win each week. And it will not take long before the rumblings start among those guys as to, we got a weak link on this roster. Like, and the weak link is the most important position. And if you, I don't know how anybody watched that game. Listen, my Twitter will tell me otherwise. I don't know how anybody watched that game today and didn't think that the Bears' weak link is their quarterback. That the Bears' weak link, that we, can, we cannot see this offensive project with this happening at quarterback. If he, if he can't hit wide open guys, if he's floating balls into space for no reason, if he's, if he's tripping over offensive linemen and he's fumbling snaps, we're, we're talking about a guy who is completely lost the plot. And getting him back on plot, I just, I have never seen it happen in season. Uh, you don't see quarterbacks who stink in the first month be great in November. This stuff happens in the off season with personal coaches, with all the time they can put in. This guy, I don't see this guy making significant improvements in season, which is why I know they won't do it. But man, I would I would consider maybe that injury he suffered in the fourth quarter. Maybe it's not as serious as as they make it out to be this week, and they put him on the injured list, and they make him questionable, and they say he's banged up, and they just get him a break because it's all happening too fast for him. And I think if he stays on the field, this is only going to get worse. 
I agree. And unfortunately, I've always said to a lot of people, I've, I loved Justin at Ohio State. He doesn't look like the same guy. He doesn't have any of the confidence and the zip in his throws that you would have seen then, or even like to some points last year, when you when you saw a guy that looked confident, he, he doesn't look like that right now. And you're right, if he's not able to bring this up, for me, it just resembles what happened in Arizona, where they, I know they traded up for it, where they traded for Josh Rosen and then suddenly a new regime come in and they go and get Kyler Murray. And that's going to be the exact same thing that happens if it feels doesn't prove that he can run this offense. Because as we've mentioned, any person or any player that's on this team right now that doesn't fit what even Flues or Poles want going forward, they won't be here. The only difference is because he's a first round draft pick, they're not just going to outright get rid of him. But if they get a really good draft pick, next year and they see a quarterback that they genuinely like, they're not going to be afraid to pull the trigger. The only way they wouldn't is if Fields proved to them that he's a guy for them. And right now, like you said, Jeff, he looks like one of the worst starting quarterbacks in the league right now. And I don't know how it gets better because he's worse. Year, he's worse than he was last year. He's worse than he was last yeah. year. I don't, that's, that's a little bit jarring to me that he's, he's taken a step back from where he seemed to be at the end of last season. There were some real positive signs there. Uh, they're all gone. And, you know, I, I talked about this last week and people were trying to uh, ridicule me. I talked about this on one of my audio tweets. Uh, there are three elements to an NFL quarterback's play. And he's not doing any of them well. You know, he's not accurate with the football. Uh, he's not processing the game. And he's showing no awareness. And if he doesn't have any of those – listen, he's a terrific runner. And that's a, that's a dynamic to his game that's exciting to see. But right now he's a running back playing quarterback. I know yeah. that sounds cruel and people hate when you say it, but he's not playing the position. And I think the sideline, the sideline told you at the end of the first half, they showed you that they don't think he's playing the position because they would have said to him, go get us 30 yards and a field goal opportunity. They only need a 30 yards for a kick. They would have said, go get it. And they didn't. And to me, that, that, that tells you all you need to know about what, how he's processing information, how he's playing the game. Uh, and I, and I think they have the Giants next week and Wink Martindale. And if you guys know Wink Martindale's defensive strategy, he is going to bring pressure. Uh, and Wink Martindale just watched that game. I'm telling you, they were watching with with uh, with Dayball and Wink. And, and Wink is sitting there going, we are going to kick the shit out of these receivers at the line of scrimmage. And we are going to bring pressure. And we are going to make this kid sit in the pocket and beat us. And there is simply no way to believe that the guy we've watched play quarterback for three weeks is capable of doing that. There just isn't. Uh, and so I, I would be worried about the Meadowlands next week in Jersey because that's that's a recipe for disaster for this kid. That's why I think I, I would put him, make him questionable for whatever the hell happened to him at the end and just give him a breather. I think he needs it. I think I see him on the sideline. I have a lot to say about this. I didn't realize I would. The uh, On the sideline, the, whatever he's doing there, closing the eyes, the meditating thing, I don't know what that is, but it's not good. I mean, I've watched a lot of great quarterbacks play play in the NFL. I've never seen them go to the sideline, close their eyes, and look like they're meditating when they're not on the field. You know, the great ones are rallying their teammates and, and talking to coaches and working through plays and figuring out what went wrong. He's got his eyes closed on, his, on the bench. I, what What is actually happening in this kid's head right now that he believes he should meditate between drives? How How broken is he? And if the, if the answer is as broken as I think he is, that might not be fixable. So, uh, again, I don't want to be totally negative because there's so many positives right now in what this program is building. They are they are a juggernaut running game, and they are a fun running game to watch. Khalil Harbert is terrific. The offensive line is coming together. Roquan probably going to win Defensive Player of the Week this week. I mean, what a, what a game that was. But we, as Bears fans, have been watching the one position that matters in this sport fail for our entire lives. And no matter how old you are, that sentence works. For your entire life, they have failed at this position and it looks like they did again. Yeah. It's depressing, man. It really it is. Sucks. It I feel just like we're sucks. just having the same conversations we had Ever- with our previous young draft team quarterbacks. quarterbacks. Do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> when but, the, but at the time, team? they didn't feel this bad, though, Tony. Those other conversations didn't feel like this. Like, this feels a lot worse. And Jeff is right. So obviously we all seen him on those few times when he was sitting on the sideline. It wasn't just that his eyes closed; his head went back, and he just yeah, he was it's weird. He was it's weird. In his head and he's it's terrible. 
I think he almost seemed like a today. guy who was trying to bring himself down from some sort of like anger or high anxiety state. You know, he's closing his eyes like, I'll count to 10, I'll count to 10, I'll get back to where I'm meant to be. And it's like, mate, you cannot be doing that. You're meant no. to be this ice in I, your I don't even think he's trying to meditate. You know I mean? think he's just thinking, what the fuck is going on? What am I going to yeah. do? Yeah. I don't yeah. think he's even trying. He should be, as you say, he should be down working with the coaches, looking at the screen, <gasps> going through plays. But he's yeah. sitting there on his own, just thinking, what the fuck am I going to do? It, and it's, you know it's what, depressing. I'll, I'll, say, I'll, and it's, I'll, I'll say this too. Mitch felt like a slow bleed. Right, so Mitch felt like over the span of time we got used to the fact that he couldn't hit open receivers downfield. I, a month ago, I'm watching that last preseason game, thinking Justin Fields is about to turn a corner. And look at how accurate he is. Look at how comfortable he is. And I, I always warn people, and I warn myself, never get worked up about preseason games. Well, folks, that's why, because that was those were those were crap players with nothing to play for and no scheme. And you don't have to process information when you don't have a scheme that you're even running. This guy mentally right now is not in the game emotionally is not in the game and physically is not in the game if there's something else i don't know about maybe metaphysically he's in the game i don't know I, honest to goodness don't know what positives you could even take he made some nice plays in the sam fran game in the second half right it, it those were wide open guys, folks. I mean, like, he wasn't throwing guys open in that game. He was scrambling around, playing some backyard stuff in a monsoon, and he made a couple of plays. He has now put together in three football games five of the worst halves we've seen at that position in a long time. I don't think Mitch ever had a, had a three-game span with five halves this bad at the quarterback position. And I, I think in this NFL – the, the sooner you can realize that a guy is not going to be it, the, the quicker you can you can bring your franchise to where they need to get to. And I, I will tell you right now, and I haven't spoken to anybody, the game just ended, there's without question people in that building right now going, uh-oh. Uh, and, and that's how it starts. It'll start in the hallways. It'll start with conversation. Uh, and then they'll go into, a, into, into meeting rooms this week, and he's going to have to look at that tape. And I... How is he going to handle that when he looks and sees not only what he left on the field, but just the mistakes and, and the wide open receivers that he's missing and the, and, the, and the check downs that are there and the pressure he's not feeling. You know, on one of those last drives where he, you know, he, uh, he was a play action boot and the safety came in on the blitz and, and nailed him. A quarterback's job is to recognize that before he snaps the football. His job is to say, there's a safety there. He's not usually there. Let me slide my protection over to him. Let me move somebody in motion over there to make sure that if he comes, I've got a guy over there waiting to at least chip him and give me a space to throw. He's not seeing any of that. And I don't know how you put all of these pieces together in season. It's They don't have the time, right? They're going to start preparing for the Giants in two days. So I don't know, they don't have hours to sit with him in a classroom and go, here's what you're not seeing. Here's, that's not how this schedule is built anymore. That has to happen in the summer. Uh, and they thought they were, I think they thought they were way further along with him than they turned out to be. So uh, there's no positive from Fields right now. I don't think he's the guy. I'm getting closer to being definitive about it. And I hate that. But, uh, you know, otherwise, I, I do like what the program looks like. I mean, I, I, like, I like the attitude. Uh, and I think if they were playing Trevor Simeon right now, if they hadn't taken a quarterback and this team were had, had Trevor Simeon at quarterback, we would be on this podcast right now and we would be jubilant. We would be saying, man, look, they play tough. They're not, we know they're outmanned a little bit talent wise. They play tough. They make big plays. They're running it down people's throat. Simeon made a play here, a play there. We know he's not the future. We would be saying, look, this thing is, this thing is going in the right direction, but because the quarterback was here. We're obsessed with it. And I think we have to start thinking a little bit differently about this team. I think we have to start thinking about him as a stopgap option for this regime because if he doesn't show gigantic leaps, I never thought this was possible. I didn't think his floor was this. And it's this is bad. So I, I think we have to start just focusing on everybody else. This is the opposite of what I talked about all offseason, by the way. I think we have to start looking at everybody else and saying, okay, where is the production there? How's Kyler Gordon looking? Great second half today. That's a good sign. Brisker looks like he's going to be a stud, right? 
That's a great sign. Roquan making plays. He'll get his money. That'll all work out, okay? All this stuff's coming together well. And I think we have to stop focusing our attention on fields and stop worrying about his development. If it happens, it happens. But I don't think it's that big a deal anymore. I, I think we're starting to get to that point where I just don't think he should be our focus. And it's sad, but there's so much work that needs to be done with that guy. And it, it just doesn't strike me as this coaching staff and this organization who didn't bring him in. I don't see them wanting to put the years in it's going to take because I think it's years. I'm looking at that guy playing quarterback, and I'm thinking he's two, three years away from being an NFL, a top NFL starter. Yeah, and the key thing is uh, I think this would be a much – sadder conversation if it was the same regime that had traded up for him and because you know that they have to keep investing in mm -hmm. him as a quarterback but when you have a new regime they have like we said they've no links to him they didn't give up any draft picks for him they didn't move up for him they may not have even liked him and the thing is it's clear that the coaches aren't going towards his skill set because they don't believe in him right now because that's why you run those third down plays when it's third and 10, third and 12, and you're running a draw because you don't trust him to make a play. You think he's probably going to make a mistake. So if they get an opportunity to go and upgrade that position, they're going to do it. What are his, uh, what are his skill sets? I, I'm, this is, I'm not, and I'm not being glib. Like what are, because all I was told was that you got to call more play action boots. He doesn't seem any better with those. As a matter of fact, he gets less accurate outside the pocket he's he's yeah. there was one throw today and I, forgive me I, I didn't i didn't take notes today because i just didn't want to um there was one play today where he was rolling to his right i think he tried to throw a, a ball back to i think it was it was a tight end i don't think it was commit he missed him by 10 yards and floated the ball way behind him didn't set his feet didn't lock in no mechanics and I, and I and i just watched it at the moment and i went this is a person who has lost complete touch with the mechanics with the fundamentals with everything so i i just don't know what his skill sets are i know definitively he's one of the most talented runners at the position we've seen he's capable of 40 yards on every run uh i don't think he seems to understand when he should run and when he shouldn't run but uh i don't see anything i don't see any definable skill set as a throwing quarterback i don't see anything yeah he, he has the capability of putting some zip on a pass they are all the quarterbacks, with the exception of maybe Tua, can throw a bullet over the middle. Uh, Davis Mills can throw a fucking bullet. The, the I just don't see it. And, and if someone could, could show me tape and go, this is what, what he does really well. This is what they should do more. There's not tape does not exist in this regular season so far. So uh, that would be what I say. I say I, I, I'm tired of even talking about calling plays that suit him. Let's just call plays where he's not going to ruin games because that's where he's at right now. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to call an offensive play, uh, a scheme that, that doesn't allow him to destroy the game for the other 50 guys. And that's a terrible place to be. But it sure seems like that's where they are. Yeah, and the problem yeah. is he's not doing what, when you look at him back at Ohio State, the one thing you would say is that he's he was an accurate quarterback. And that's the one thing that he's not been able to do since he's, especially this year, like, there was times last year when you saw and there was accuracy on some of his throws, but this this year has been crazy where it seems like I, I think today I tweeted out that I can't remember a single throw that seemed like it was an accurate pass. Like you said, it seemed uh, sometimes it was lucky that some of the passes were getting completed. And yeah. like it's just a, it's a really sad situation to be in because in an ideal world, what you would have had is some sort of belief in Justin this year, and then you're able to build it, build from the system that you're going to put in place this year over the coming years but we've always said this team is building towards 2023 when they have all that when they have all that draft capital back where they have all of the cap room available to them but the problem is if you don't have the quarterback that then comes back to the top of the list again and it's going to come down to justin he either has to prove that he can be the guy which he's not doing or he's going to get replaced because again, new regime. That's what they'll do. Sorry, Tony, for cutting across. What you want to say? Um, oh God, I can't even remember what I was going to say. It was a long, no, it was, it was a long I'll, I'll, hang, I'll hang up. I'll hang up shortly so you guys can talk. That would be helpful. When, when I get no, up, you guys can have a conversation. <laughs> we're, no, it, it's just we're talking about you know. I, I, I get like what you're saying, Jeff, and I agree with you in ninety-five percent of it. 
I just feel like we can't, you can't just, you can't give up just yet because there's no other option, really. I mean, you, you, you can put Trevor Simeon in, fine, right? But yeah, you may, yeah. any day, this isn't a season where we're going to be winning anything anyway. So we might as well just see it out with Justin Fields and hope that he gets better, you know, like, because as I say, there's that situation there where this could go one of two ways. You know, he could get back to the way he was playing last year and kind of move on from there in that direction, or he could continue the way he's playing this year and move on in that direction, which is two, at the moment, is two different players altogether. You know, and you've got to sit down, you've got to think to yourself, there must be something else going on here. You know, it's got to be there's something intangible going on. Or I don't know, but he needs to have a look inside himself and say, why am I not doing what I need to be doing? You know, and the biggest thing for me is, you know, fair enough, sense and pressure and all that, you have to do those kind of things. The biggest thing for me, though, is just not throwing the ball to the guy that's open. Just <laughs> snap the ball and fucking rip it and get it to just the guy it. who's open. That's all yeah. you need to do. No one's asked. That. I think I think it, it, it's one of these situations where, again, I go back to it, there's a lot of overthinking going on. He's overcomplicating the situation. The coaches need to sit down with him this week and say, listen, we're not going with this touchdown, check down mentality. Just check it down until you get comfortable with what's going on. Complete passes, rely on our running game. The offensive line have been doing great in, 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 in run protection. You know, pass protection, not not as not quite as good, but it's still still good enough to be to have for a serviceable quarterback to get the job done. That's all he needs to do at the moment. Get your, your head in the game, get up to speed with what's happening. Dump the ball off to your running back. Dump the ball off to your tight end, and just make those easy completions. You look at Tom Brady, right? For instance, right? Tom Brady is dinking and dunking all over the place, throwing five-yard yeah. completions and six-yard completions. That's all you need to do. And, we, and on top of that, we've got the running game going. If you're if you're getting to a situation where you're sitting at third and five, give the ball to Herbert, and he'll run the ball five yards over the line more than likely. You know, like you you need to change the approach here and 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 evolve. You know, start off as you are just now. We're not saying that Justin, Justin Fields is going to be this quarterback forever, but this is the quarterback you are just now. Evolve from there and just use what you have and build your knowledge, build your confidence and see where this thing goes. It doesn't have to be a rip it all out and start again thing, I don't think. I think it just has to be, let's try a different approach here and let's enforce this. You don't get the option here, okay? We're telling you to do this. Dump it off to that guy. Don't look for the 40-yard... The, the Yard, uh, for your pass down, down downfield, you know. And again, I don't know what's going on in that locker room. I don't know what's been spoken about between the coaches and the quarterbacks and all this kind of stuff. You know, like, are they telling him this? Is he just going, fuck you, I'm doing this instead? I don't know what's happening. But that, for me, it seems like a, an easy sort of remedy. You know, make things simple for yourself. Don't overcomplicate Sorry. it. Tony, just on that thought, he had a lot of short passes he was missing today as well. Like, it's, it's yeah, not it like sure. all these bad just... passing were, were downfield. Yeah. There were a lot. Jeff mentioned he missed a screen. He missed a, he missed a bubble. He missed a bubble screen. That screen was terrible. Twice was a team. He missed the two of them. He missed, I, mean, he like... I mean, that's mental. I'm sorry. I can't do anything on a professional football field. Any of it. I can execute. I can throw up six yard bubble screen. It is the one thing I am capable of doing. He was he's not even particularly close on them. Like he's he's wildly missing them. Uh fucking... the only good thing about them though, I think the, the receiver would have got smashed behind the line anyway. So at least we didn't lose yards on them. But I mean it's 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 not working. What whatever it is, it's um something Jeff said earlier, I didn't see his floor being this either. This is not somewhere I thought we'd be in week three, let alone at any time during the season. And it's it's going to be so difficult for them because you are in season now and you don't have time to nope. to babysit or to baby someone and to kind of concentrate on certain things. You have the giants to prepare for, and this is this is a tough one. Now I, I do agree though they're not resting them. This you know is, why the this disappointment? Is, this is Justin Fields' year though to find out who he is, and they're yeah. gonna they're gonna play him until they find out. And as we say, they're not expecting to win anything this year. They're not expecting to win the division or the Super Bowl. So they're just going to run the fields and let him be whatever he is, and they can take it from there next year. But it, the, it could be a bumpy ride for the next what, 40, 14 games or whatever. The disappointment, though, though, is the fact that we've built this up in our heads so much since since the 2021 draft, that this guy was going to be the guy based on the fact that he did so well at Ohio That's State. That's why it hurts more, stuff. Tony, I think. That, exactly, exactly. Whereas before, when we had you know Mitch Trubisky taking out of North Carolina, one-year starter, 
you sort of ex you expect a bit more, a bit less. But with this, we've built it up so much, and yeah. and it's that that's the crushing disappointment. It's the pride before a fall and all this kind of stuff. Like, and I think that's a huge part of how how we're feeling right now. Um, let, me, and, let me just say a couple of things here before so I got I got to run. One, I'm not a college football guy, so. I didn't understand why there was all this craziness about Justin Fields, but I've never seen it to the fever pitch that it's on social media. That people seemed way more behind him than were ever behind Mitch or rooting for Mitch. There was this uh, this understanding that he was going to be this. I mean, I, I was seeing tweets in the spring: Justin Fields taking over the NFC North. And I'm going, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, can we see him play three good games in a row before we start talking about this shit? But I let it go, and I and I sort of was buying in this summer. There was a lot of excitement. I'm not saying the Trevor Simeon thing. I actually believe playing Trevor Simeon is in the best interest right now of Justin Fields. I think that decision would be about Justin Fields. And you can almost put a timetable on it if you did it smart. You could say, listen, we talked to him. We think that we'd just slow things down for him a little bit. It's natural. It happens. We're going to give Trevor a game or two. Then we're going to bring Justin right back in. But we want him to see the game with us on the sideline. You can, you can listen, it's going to have a bad media day. But ultimately, it's going to let the kid recharge the batteries. And and just as we were just talking about, I told people in the, in the spring that this organization was not going to judge him this year. But what I was talking about was based on they know the talent limitations outside. They know they don't have a great offensive line. They are going to judge him if he plays football games like this because that wasn't in any of their scripts. In none of their scripts is, was he out there sailing interceptions and missing open guys and unable to, in the, in the most base way possible, execute the offense. They expect, He has to be able to show he can do that. And guys, he's not even fucking close. That's the scary part, is that we can't, we're not sitting here now saying, okay, he's got to improve in column one and six, get a little bit better in column two. He needs to get better at everything and light years better to be a mediocre quarterback. Because backup quarterbacks in this league, most of them can make the throws he missed today. And that's the scary part, is that the, expecting that kind of leap is, is a lot to ask for in season. Uh, and the question will be, if he doesn't improve, will they even give him another season? Uh, and that'll, that, that's, that's what the next 14 weeks are going to be about in the front office while the coaching staff does everything they can. Because, again, we, we all say this. They're not expecting to win Super Bowls. They're not expecting to win the division, all that. There's That's never being said in a, in a locker room. That's never being said on the sideline. That's that's never discussed. They are talking. And these guys are putting their lives and livelihoods at stake in a, in a physical, dangerous game every week. They want to win every Sunday. And they have now seen in three weeks they've beaten two teams. So that they're, they're rolling. That, that locker room is excited right now with one exception. The quarterback's probably sitting in the corner with his eyes closed and his head back trying to figure out what the fuck is going on because he knows and the other guys in that locker room know that the coaching staff is terrified of him. And if that's the case, I don't know how you get from there to a top-tier NFL quarterback, and it certainly doesn't happen in season. And on that chipper note, boys, I'll leave you to talk because I think I, I was here 40 minutes. I talked for 38 of them. So I will – uh I'm going to put this as my post tomorrow into Bears blog. This is all I'm putting up because I've said everything I have to say. It's all here. It's all documented. Enjoy, boys. Talk to you later. All right. Thank you, Jeff. So Talk much, to you soon. Jeff. Take care. Look, it's, 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 a, it's a shitty conversation to have to have because when you're – especially, like, I saw Justin play every single game in college because, like I've said to a lot of people, I am an Ohio State fan. I like – I prefer watching Justin Fields than I do right now watching CJ Stroud when they're at Ohio State. But he's not doing the things that made him successful. And unfortunately, is that is that the offense that they're in? Or is it just that it's a guy that literally has absolutely no confidence in anything he's doing? Because that's what it looks like to me. When you look at the way Justin played in that game, Jeff mentioned it. Couldn't make a, a, a six yard bubble screen pass. That's not Justin Fields. Like the limitations of Fields for a while has been he holds on to the ball too long and some of his fumbling issues. Those have been like the key things that we've always said that he's going to need to improve on. He's going to need to quicken up that motion. The footwork needs to be a little bit better. 
but we've never really spoken about there's been a big issue with his accuracy. That was something we used to talk about with Mitch, that he would miss wide open receivers. The one thing we used to say with Justin is he had a pretty good deep ball and also that he was pretty accurate with it. Now, he hasn't shown that in the first three weeks of the season. And it's, I said it to you guys in, in our group chat. There's going to come a time when this coaching staff and this front office are going to say he's not the guy. Because if he doesn't prove it to them, because at the end of the day, they have nothing in Justin Fields. They didn't draft him. They didn't trade up for him. They didn't spend all the, the money to sign him to his rookie deal. If they want to get rid of him, they can do that if they want to. We've seen other teams do that in the past when it's a new regime comes in, not happy with the quarterback that was there. If if we have a pretty bad year, which I, I kind of suspect we may end up having, like there's going to be quarterbacks that are going to be available. Now, I, I would prefer it if Justin just played well and then we don't have to worry about that and you can look at other positions. You can look at left tackle. You can look at wide receiver, you try and get more talent on offense and build around the quarterback that you've just drafted two years ago. But unfortunately, if he doesn't prove that he can play the position at a high level, and especially if it was still like Ryan Pace and it was still Matt Nagy, we wouldn't be having this conversation. We were like, he needs to do better. You have to work on developing over the next couple of years. But because it's a new regime, you actually have to discount that. And you have to be like, there is a genuine possibility that if he doesn't play well, He's not the quarterback next year, and it's a really, really tough situation to be in. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you know, if you get to that situation, you're looking at next offseason, they've got all that money to spend. If you're changing, if you get to the end of the season, you go, right, he's not a guy for us, that changes the entire way that that money is spent and the way that the team is built. Mm -hmm. You know, if he's not going to be the guy, then who do we have playing quarterback next year? You know, because I don't think we're going to we're going to be bad enough to finish with a top five pick. I do. You know, I don't. I genuinely don't. I think. I think. I. I, do, I genuinely don't think it's as bad as has been made out to be. Uh, after today, you know, end of the day, we, we still won the game. You know, there's there's a team last year that we had there wouldn't have won that game. We'd have found ways to lose it, um, but we won the game, and I think that'll make the difference in. And quite a few of these close matchups this, this year. I don't, I don't know, Tony, because like the Houston Texans are not a good football team either. Like they're going to be a team that are going to be one of those top five got top five picks. And realistically, you're a tipped ball away from losing that football game, mm -hmm. right? It's and the, I, ne I never like doing the kind of if or buts, but this is the reality of it. If the Bears don't improve as the season goes on, they're not going to win a lot of football games. And I don't like saying that because I've always said I think that they're going to win six or seven football games. They probably have like the 12th or 13th pick in the draft. But if you're going to play the way you play today, like you're you're lucky that you got a tip ball by Vildor that was then picked off by Eddie Jackson. If that doesn't happen, it's a touchdown. And then at the very end, look, if you're playing against a team that has a better quarterback than Davis Mills, you probably lose this football game no matter how we play. But you're not going to win many football games with an offensive performance like that where you can't throw the ball. Because good teams, and Jeff mentioned it, and we saw it last week against Green Bay, good teams will be able to stop your run because they know what's coming. If you can't throw the ball and throw it with efficiency, you're not going to win football games. Now look, if Justin Fields improves over the coming weeks and proves that you can have some sort of a passing game, well, then you're right. The Bears are going to win multiple football games, and they may win seven, eight, or nine games this year because when you start off 2-1, and one, you've put yourself at an advantage in that respect. But you have to look at the games and how they've played. Okay, they won the first week in the monsoon. If that monsoon doesn't happen, there's a chance you don't win that game. We look terrible against the Packers. Today, again, bad performance, but you come away with the victory. There's only so long that you can get away with some of bad performances and still win football games. So we need to see them improve. If we don't see them improve, I don't know about you guys. I'll open it up. If we don't see this team improve and we see similar performances to that, I can't see us winning loads of football games this year because this is one of the games I expected us to win. There's not an infinite amount of terrible teams that you're going to be able to do this against. There's still a few on the record or on the schedule, but there's not a load of them. No, Kieran, I think you're spot on. Look, 
you, you can't win football games against good teams when they know all you can do is run the ball because that's what they're waiting for. And then they're going to dare Justin Fields to try and beat them. And just going on today's performance, he's, he's not going to be able to do that. And as Kieran says, hopefully he, he steps up over the next few weeks. I'm, I'm still not going to say they're going to, you know, lose the rest of the games. I still had them doing well this season, and I still think they will in maybe seven, eight, I won't say nine anymore games. But they, they need to they need to do something like that in that passing game. We spoke about it earlier on. If you are so one-dimensional, I mean, the, the Texans were the third worst run on defense. So that showed up again today. They're probably the worst now after today. You know, next week, the Giants are going to be a lot tougher than that. And then we know we have other tougher games on the schedule. So, so and I don't even know. Something just needs to be done because it's such a worry with this passing game at the moment that it's it's – it's unbelievably how bad it actually is. I never saw it being this bad. And I don't know where you go from here, but you need to get better at it because if you're constant and now we could be Montgomery could be gone. So it could literally be Herbert and Ebner for the rest of the season or for the next few weeks, which again, just limit your options. I know Herbert played brilliant today, but I mean, I don't know. I get what you're saying, though, but I need a bigger sample size yet before I, absolutely, I, I, but I, just... I draw, draw the curtain on this because oh, it's effectively effectively this is the second game because the first game wasn't really a game. It was it was as you say it was a monsoon. Like there, you, you couldn't you couldn't effectively play whatever game you set out to play. Um, so I need to see a bigger sample size before I say that if the Bears continue to do this, that and the next thing that it's going to be terrible. Yeah, if Justin Fields continues to play the way he did today, we're not going to get anywhere. But if the Bears are able to look at what they're doing and make adjustments to the offense in, in terms of what I was saying when Jeff was on there, in terms of the way that they pass the ball, you know, the the the, the idea in their head of how they're gaining yards, then they've got to do that. And once they've done that, once these adjust adjustments have been made, or if the adjustments have been made, then I can look at it and say, right, okay, well, we're, we're eight, nine, ten games into the season. This is what we're working with. And then I can say at that point, this is a shit show or it's not a shit show. And even at that point, you're still going to have seven games left in the season. Do you know what I mean? Like, so for yeah, me, I'm, know, I'm, like, I'm not, I'm not writing all off and saying like, this is definitely not a big, I, I genuinely don't think we'll pick and be picking in the top five. I still don't think that's going to happen. I think this, this coaching um, set up are going to find ways to win games. They're going to make adjustments you know, you've, you've seen it in the uh, Green Bay game last week. First half was atrocious. There were second, there were halftime adjustments made, and that second half was a lot better on both sides of the ball. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's about making adjustments, knowing your limitations still. You know you're still not a great team, but you're making the adjustments and working with what you've got. And I think it's taking the coaching staff time to understand that off the back of playing in real competitive games versus just playing in practice with each other or playing in sort of just one-on-one -on -one matchups and preseason friendlies, you know? So I get what you're saying, absolutely, but I just feel like a, it's, it's far too early for me to say that this is going to be a top five pick in the draft team. I don't think it's that bad, but again, that's just my opinion. I, I, I'm right what there you're saying you. there, like, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not drawing any curtains on the season or, as I say, I still think they win a few games and I, I had them win a few games. But my point is they, they need to sort out that passing game because you can't rely on Herbert to do that every week. You Absolutely. can't rely on the opposite defense to allow you to put that many yards up on the ground. And it's while we all knew, look, let's be honest, all of us knew this was a rebuilding process and all of us knew there were going to be speed bumps here and there. And that's fine. But it's just this. This passing game is historically bad at the moment. It's it's not even they're not unlucky. It is bad, and they really do need to do something. Now I would stick with Fields because he is your number one guy, and you do need to get him going again. But at this just just today now, the signs are not good. His body language, and I hate going on body language. Now they've gone up closer, but just his demeanor when he sat down didn't look confident you know what i mean looking at him and they they do need to start so now, now hopefully they will he is still young talented quarterback i do think he is and maybe working with him as they go on and on they will find things that he's more comfortable at and they'll baby steps along the way and as you said earlier tony just give him small little things just to kind of move the move the sticks and kind of keep going but it, it's something needs to change because you can't run the ball like that every weekend and other teams are really going to capitalize on a, an offensive performance through the air like that. It's just, it's, it's, 
more of a concern than I thought it would be, even at this early stage. Yeah, one hundred percent. And like, yeah, it it does suck to be able to have to talk like this so early on in the season. But again, it's the performances. Um, guys, there's a bunch of you watching us over on Twitter, so make sure you come over onto YouTube, get your comments in, we'll read some of them out, all that sort of stuff. Look, Seth, I want to give you an opportunity to to come and give your opinion on everything that's been going on with Justin this this week, last week, the week before. It's been it's been a tough ride early on in this season. Yeah, I the crazy thing is it's not as though the plays aren't there to be made. Last year and even the year before, it was, oh, you know, nobody's open, nobody's open. And I think especially as we get the all-22 back and, and look over everything, it the biggest thing is just not necessarily the awareness in the pocket or, you know, taking off running too early. It's just missing reads altogether. Like on the, the one of the picks, EQ streaking wide open down the field like it's a touchdown like all he has to do is just look that way and i know he was trying to look off the safety but that safety had his number all day there was you know no reason to try to to force that throw uh and use that to your advantage look the safety off if he starts to go that way that's even more reason to to take that uh other pass and the sacks were i i think he had he was sacked five times by my count three of those were completely on him it was either holding the ball way too long or deciding to leave the pocket way too early and then running into somebody. And you can't have those things. I mean, if he steps it up, I mean, obviously that's, that's a great thing. We all want to see that, but I didn't see enough today to make me feel comfortable going forward. Um, I'm not saying sound the alarms, pull him, send him, send him off to the, you know, the depths of the, the basement, but, you gotta it's it's all mental it almost seems like in baseball when, when you know a pitcher or you know an infielder has the yips like he can make that throw we've seen him make that throw over and over again but whether it's just a confidence thing i know in his press conference he said his confidence is, is fine but i'm not seeing decisive you know what i'm just gonna chuck the ball and, and make something happen i'd rather him throw three interceptions with you know being confident in his throws than to throw one because he's just tossing one up and floating it so i yeah i don't know what needs to happen come this next week of practice but i he's got to do something or the chants for simeon are going to get louder and louder and louder and that's going to hurt his confidence even more yeah look the the one thing that's uh, it, it, it is tough when we have to talk about this because at the end of the day, you want him to do well, but when you're starting to miss some of the most obvious and easy throws out there, that's when you start to get people that are going to be asking for Because I don't think anybody was going into the season ever thinking they're going to ask for Trevor Simeon or even have this conversation really when it comes to, to Justin. But at the end of the day, he's got to step it up. Like it's, it's down to him here. Like, I think there's the the two sides of this, right? There's Justin needs to play a lot better. And while there's plays where you see receivers open, for me, it's still not consistent enough. And it's the reason why Justin hesitates because there's no trust that his receivers are going to win their matchups. So like, yes, there's times when somebody gets some, where you might see somebody getting open. You can see that in, in the all 22 at different points in time. But the thing is, if the person that's getting open is his third or fourth read and the guys in his first, second or third read are not getting open, that's a problem. And that's the issue that we have right now, that he doesn't have that chemistry with those guys because there's some of those guys that on certain plays, yes, they're able to get open, but it's nowhere near to what you would expect from an NFL level offense. And that's the question that you have. You have on both sides of things that you have a quarterback that's clearly not doing well enough but also you have a receiving core that he is not able to build chemistry with because on a consistent basis, guys are not getting open. Now, it's on Justin to try and throw some of these guys open and build that kind of chemistry up with them. 
But the problem is if he doesn't trust in these guys that they can win their one-on-one matchups, you're already behind the eight ball because before that play even comes out, he's already worrying if somebody's good, if my first read's going to get open, what's going to happen here, what's going to happen here. And you can see it where there was a couple of throws, even though he threw it deep, I don't think he believed that he was going to complete that pass. And he was throwing it just for throwing its sake. And it's a really bad position to be in. It's something that Mitch used to do all the time where I don't think he had belief in some of the throws <laughs> often when he was going deep, but he knew that he had to because that was what the play called for. And that's why you'd see him throw into double or triple coverage. We've seen that from Justin this year as well. And until that gets better, unfortunately, nothing's going to change. But look, what I, what I want to do, we've, what, we've spoken a hell of a lot about Justin Fields here. I do want to talk about the rest of the game um, because, again, the Bears have gone out. They have won. They are 2-1. and one. That is really important to talk about. Um, so, look, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the key takeaways um, from the Bears versus Houston. So, first things first, obviously, um, David Montgomery goes out injured. He is then, I think Iberflu said he is now day-to-day. So that's a good sign to start off with, that it doesn't look like it might be too serious. But Khalil Herbert had a really, really good game today. The offensive line were really good. You had some good performances on defense, some good performances on offense. So what I want to do is I want to kind of get some of your opinions on what you were impressed with, especially obviously going – two and one here at the end of the day that's the most important thing that you win football games right like you can play like dog shit but if you win each week it doesn't really matter right so they end up coming away with the victory some good some bad tony what are some of your key takeaways that you would take from this game i mean i I think that the most obvious one you have to point out is the running game i think it's been absolutely phenomenal um, I mean, what we were what, nearly 300 yards rushing or something today, some crazy like that, you know. And it, it's it's just unbelievable when you think about where we were as a running team last year and the sort of changes that have been made. You know, we were crying out last year for us to run the ball more, this year we're crying out for us to pass the ball more. But you know, sometimes you're never happy. But I think you've really got to say that you know the way that they've set up and particularly the, how well the offensive line have played in the run game um, ha- have meant that regardless of who's playing in a running back, you can rely on production. You know, David Montgomery, if he'd have played that game uh, to the end, he would have ended up with the same sort of numbers as Khalil Herbert did. Um, you know, but, but Herbert's come in and he's just been able to do what, what he needed to do. And that, that, that was phenomenal. So for me, as part of an offense that's struggling, to be able to fall back on a great running game and also as an offensive lineman been able to be physical and be successful in a running game is is a huge confidence boost those guys will be feeling great about themselves in terms of that now pass protection wasn't as great i still have concerns over larry vodum at right tackle personally i have concerns over sam mustafer at center um but um, all in all, I thought the offensive line were, were pretty decent. So for me, the biggest takeaway is that the running game looks really, really good. And if only we could get a base passing game to complement that, this could be a team that wins a lot of games because the defense are knocking their pan in out there. So it could all come together, but hey-ho, that's where we're at at the moment. But running game was 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 really really good and i just wanted to throw to take my hat off to those guys and especially the guys up front on on the on the line and say well done yeah no i'm gonna come to you next um other than them the running game because i think we can all agree that khalil herbert had another really really good game today i think anytime you can rush as a team for over 200 yards it's always a really good positive especially when your passing game isn't working and that can all that can often be quite difficult when your passing game isn't working to get your running game going. And so, what's some of the other takeaways that you that you can see from this game? And all that obviously, look, there's the win, there's the good running attack. But what else were you impressed with? Well, just to follow up on something Tony said in the show earlier on today, if we needed to win, you needed someone like Croco and Smith to kind of step up, and he did today. I thought Smith was excellent today. I think he was involved in. 16 tackles and it felt like he was everywhere 
And then you come down to the, you know, the interception that that wins the game for us was the great play by Roquan. So yeah, it's, it was nice to see him step up because obviously he's got a little bit of, there's a little bit of chatter on the week about how, you know, he wasn't great last week, the week before he wants the money he wants. He has the contract issue. And if he needs, if he wants that money, he's going to have to kind of step up and, and earn that money. I know, look, you can say it's the Texans, fair enough, but it's another NFL team. And he, he came out tonight and he did his job and he did it well. I thought the defense as a whole had some good and bad points. I think Carla Gordon started a bit iffy. There was that big completion through the middle there or that he got caught in earlier on. I thought he kind of came into it then later on. He had a nice tip on a tour down, I think. And, you know, I think Robinson got in there. I think, did he get credited another sack or half sack today? Yeah, he got a half sack today. Again, just good to see him. He he gets limited snaps and he's still able to come in and, and kind of cause problems. Uh, nice to see Eddie Jackson to get another interception. So the defense, I thought, as a whole, came on better as the game went on and they kind of started to to cause the Texans problems. But overall, it was Roquan Smith that was driving that today. And hopefully he can now take this performance and roll it on next week to the Giants. Um, keep doing this and then go get your money at the end of the year. I think that's what we all want to see if you can put the performances in. So yeah, Roquan Smith. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to remember in the defense that there was two other fumbles that they just didn't manage to get back. So I think one was a that one under Joe Thomas's legs. That one. God. There's even that even the in the first half where they got a strip. I think it was Eddie Jackson that punched the ball out and it went through two yeah. Bears players and somehow ended up back at them. So yeah, like the one thing you can say is that for the defense they're doing what the coaches are asking for the most part. Like there's limitations there. We can tell they still don't set the edge well enough in the run and you're still seeing missed tackles happen, but at least you're seeing guys actually like swarm to the football, which we were not seeing against green Bay. So it seems like they got, like you said in the, in the preview there, Tony is a little bit of the swagger back in the defense. That's what we wanted to see. And Seth, look, same sort of, question to you is there anything else that you can kind of think of that would be a takeaway from you that would be a positive for today's victory well the the biggest thing i mean obviously going into this everyone the biggest concern on the defense was the you know the the run defense if you take away that 24 yard run that he had he averaged he averaged 2.9 yards a carry and then it's even less when you factor that i think he had a 14 yard run as well i mean they cleaned up a lot. If they continue to clean up, you know, then it just gets easier and easier. And they did this without Jalen Johnson and Matt Adams. Like th those are two people that make a pretty good impact and they were able to do that. So, you know, you, and everybody else stepped up as well. Eddie Jackson had a really great game and has had a really great year so far. Kendall Valdor was probably the best corner uh, on the field. Uh, for the Bears, at least. Like, yeah, he had that touchdown, but other than that, I mean, I think I counted three uh, PBUs for him, or at least close to it, being right there and, and, and making sure nothing happened. Um, and to reiterate everything you guys have said, Roquan Smith, he played fast. He wasn't like you. He wasn't thinking. He was just reacting and, and hitting things, and and that's what I wanted to see. Like the tackles he was making today. There was one. It hurt me to watch it. Like he hit that dude so hard, I felt it. And those are the things he needs to do because before the tackles he was making, he's falling backwards. And today, when he was hitting people, he was he was hitting with authority. And the misses that he was making were because he was flying in there versus you know hesitating and then getting pushed back. The two big missed tackles I saw from him, he just was coming in a full head of steam, and had somebody happened to you know make a little move. And I would much rather see stuff like that than the missed tackles where people are diving or they're hesitating and just watching people run by and, you know, hug and air. Um, and offensively, I thought they played exceptionally well um, beyond just the run game stuff. Like they were holding form of the pocket pretty well. Um, there's a few things here and there, but I think by and large, once Patrick is able to play center and clean up some of those things obviously it'll take a little bit to you know get the the snaps down which is why he didn't start you don't want you know some of your first snaps coming like that i mean who knows how many more miscues there could have been um 
but Jenkins continues to play well. Borum in in run blocking has been really great. He was better in pass pro than the previous two games. That's for sure. Um, but I'm liking what I'm seeing out of him. And I think when they go back to look at all the film and see how often EQ was open, I think you're going to see a lot more plays designed to scheme him the ball versus Mooney. And I think Mooney will eventually get going, but I think with how much he was open, I, I think there's a good chance you're going to see a lot of targets come EQ's way because he was he was running pretty darn good routes, and he's a lot more athletic and explosive than I realized. Um, I almost had to go back and like, oh, that was him on that play. Like that 41-yard run he had, zero chance I thought he was going to take it for that. Like I knew he was a big guy. I didn't know he was that quick. Um, but I think you'll see a lot more from him. And now we're at the point where we've seen the headline again with Mooney out on the field with the jug machine. This time it's uh, on the field instead of the hotel room. But after he did that previously, I think I counted one drop before. I think you're going to see uh, a lot more from the wide receivers coming forward, but especially EQ. I wouldn't be surprised if this next game, if EQ just goes off. Which is kind of what you're looking for, right? It's a, it's a tough situation. Look, we all have spoken at length to what Fields needs to do, but this has always been a season <clears throat> where you need to figure out who can play, who can be in the system going forward and, yeah, it was nice to see Equinemia St. Brown have a really good game today. And that that run, he's, he's, a, he's a weird one because when you see him run, he doesn't look fast, but then you just see that the camera just goes and like, oh, he's actually, he's scooting pretty well there. But like when you actually see him run, he doesn't appear that like he's a fast, twitchy receiver. But the one thing is he's effective. And it's shown that with a little bit of playing time that he can be at least – a option on the offense he's never going to be that kind of go-to guy but he's somebody that you can trust to where he can be a part of this offense you can probably bring him in a little bit further than just this year um but look it's it's a tough situation to to be in because we can talk all this stuff it's great the defense i think they kind of came back a little bit today versus what we saw last week you again, we're seeing guys like Dominique Robinson play well. I think Robert Quinn got held on probably 10 plays today, so he didn't even get an opportunity in there. Roquan Smith getting the interception, getting a bunch of TFLs, getting I think 17 tackles in one game is just ridiculous. Um, and even the fact that Jalen Johnson wasn't out there and you didn't have too much trouble. And again, that shows that you had a little bit of pressure. You didn't have to blitz much. I think I only counted that there was two blitzes that the Bears did in the game. One was with Brisker, and didn't they didn't really need to, but they put enough pressure on the quarterback. You saw, like we said, Dominique Robinson. You saw Justin jo- Justin Jones coming through on that half a sack as well. Those are positives. The offense, we mentioned Equinemius St. Brown. You saw Cole Komet make a few important catches today. While it wasn't a bit, it wasn't a lot in terms of volume. There were the key ones on third down to kind of move the change chains. I think that was important. You saw Col- or you saw Darnell Mooney have a few catches today. Still, nothing like we're expecting. But when your quarterback doesn't play well, it's very hard for receivers and tight ends to really get in the game. The one thing I I do want to point out, and you said it, Seth yourself, the offensive line is improving week on week on week. I think that's one area, and I tweeted it out during the week, and then people just got all bull hurt. So I was like, screw it, don't care. I'm just going to tweet out the story so you can all read it yourselves. Um, that this offensive line is not as bad as people think it is. It's not as good as like some of the analytics sites like ESPN or PFF are putting it at right now in terms of the pass blocking. Because look, the, the one thing I'll say for people is for offensive line play, you kind of need to use st- stats within a context because all of these are, are very difficult things, right? So the one that ESPN did in terms of their pass blocking grades, essentially what it was for was how long can you hold up your block? Because that's most of the time when you're pass blocking, you're not getting beat in two seconds, right? You're holding it up and then eventually they get past. And the bears were, ranking very high in that now we've seen them get beat at different points in time 
but we were led to believe going into the season that this offensive line wouldn't be able to protect Fields for the life of them. And they've been really good. And you're seeing, I think Braxton Jones has been steady, which is all you can really ask for from a fifth round rookie playing left tackle. You have Tevin Jenkins and Lucas Patrick who keep switching in and out, which I hate, but still both have played reasonably well. Sam must have had a tough day today, but he has shown at times this season that he is capable of starting. Um, Larry Borm, you mentioned it, Seth, in the run game. I think he's been really, really good. In the past game, there, he's inconsistent. That's where I'll say I think there's times when he looks good and times where he looks like he's lost. And what he needs to do is he needs to just, if he's more consistent with some of his pass blocks, sometimes it's just there's times when if a pass rusher puts a counter move on him, that's when he struggles a lot. Um, because again, he's trying to then reset his feet, which he's not able to do quick enough. So if he's able to do that, then you're going to see this offensive line improve. And the one thing is this offensive line, we've said this the entire off season. They're a phenomenal group at run blocking. You can't even, you can't say anything about them. They've been really good today. Just proved it. When you're able to run for what was it? 275 yards. You can't complain about the offensive line. Justin, there was multiple times when he had five to seven seven step drops and nobody's in his face because everybody's getting blocked properly. The issue is, I don't know, I do need to see kind of the all 22 because I want to find a reason why some of those plays weren't working. Is Justin looking to where those guys that are open? Is he not? It, what is he doing? I want to see where his head is at. Is his head on a swivel looking, trying to go through his progressions and then just missing a guy in terms of what he's looking at? Or a bigger issue is if he sees it, but he's not trusting his eyes. That's the biggest issue that you're, you're going to have in a quarterback. That's why I, I'm looking forward to seeing the All-22 when it does come out because just more to see what he's seeing. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I, The one thing I know when we look at a lot of these, we see – at the end of a certain play, after the, the throw has been made, somebody gets open. I want to see what are the receivers doing prior to that. Is there anybody that's kind of not getting jammed up? Because that's what we've seen on a couple of different plays here as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how that comes about with the offense because this thing needs to just get better. It doesn't matter. Like The one thing I would say is all it needs to do is be adequate in the passing game. You don't have to have some special – passing attack you're running the ball perfectly right now if you can just get a team to believe that they're gonna have to defend the pass as well it's gonna open up the running game and then you have an offense that you can build on we said it this offseason this team is gonna have to be built on running the football which right now they are but the problem is you need to also be able to supplement that with the passing game and that's not happening and that needs to happen over the next couple of games now we look at it and there's teams there that you're going to be able to kind of see, can this team actually develop? Like next week, yes, we have the Giants. Now, the Giants in terms of defensively, will they're a hard-nosed team, but it's not a team full of superstars out there. You then have the Vikings coming up, which we've seen they're a up-and-down team where they look terrible in the first half against the Lions today and then come back and end up winning that football game. You have the commanders who have been terrible this year as well, but you look at how they play, they played a little bit better than the Bears, even though their record doesn't say it. The Patriots, we don't know what's going on with Mac Jones right now. He came off injured today and it looked really, really bad. So he may not be he may not be available. And those are your next four games. So each of your next four games, you can compete in to win those football games. And you could see the Bears winning. Or the Bears losing. My biggest thing is if they play the way they did today on offense, they're not going to win many of those football games. And these are games you're you need to kind of build that. Tony, I'm go- I'm going to bring you in because, you, like you said earlier on the show, you believe that this team can win a decent amount of football games. The one thing that I think is really important over these next couple of weeks is that the Bears are able to win some of these ones coming up and give yourself a bit of confidence. Because after those four games that I talk about, 
then it starts to get more tricky. You come up against the Cowboys, who I don't know what the prognosis is for Dak Prescott or how they're going to be going. But then after that, you have Miami, who just beat Buffalo today. And like every, we were saying it before the show, every one of us picked Buffalo to win that football game and probably make the Super Bowl. And the fact that Miami were able to to beat them, it's that's going to be a really tough matchup for the Bears. You have obviously, look, there's other teams on the schedule that you're going to be like, the Bears can definitely come up against. But then you have the Eagles, you have the Bills that are also on that schedule that you're like, that's going to be really tough for this team. So, Tony, with that being said, over the next couple of weeks, what do you want to see the Bears do? Because obviously we want to see the passing game kind of open up a little bit. If Justin gets a little bit more confidence and is able to, I guess, have some semblance of a passing game going for this team. But if we have to look at it in a realistic fashion, we haven't seen it yet this season. There's not many signs that it's coming. So what are you hoping for over the next couple of weeks? I think they need to scrap whatever it is that they had planned at this point and say, you know what, this isn't working. We've tried and it's not working. I think what they need to do, and I actually spoke about it before this game, is like we need to get quick release passes going. We need quick slants, you know, uh, quick outs, all that kind of stuff. And, and just get rid of the ball as quickly as possible and just get as many yards in each play as we can. You know, or even, you know, as I said, using the, the running back uh, check down option, using your tight ends a lot more. You know, get the ball to something like Cole Komet. He's a big body guy. You can give him the ball after a one yard pickup and he himself can then drag that ball forward for another four yards. You know, you don't always have to be going for 10, 12, 15, 20 yards every time. It doesn't need to be like that. So I think they need to reevaluate the way that they play these games because, as Jeff was saying earlier on, you're going to have the Giants next next week in, in Jersey and it's they're going to come at us on defense. So we're going to have to get rid of the ball quickly. That's going to be a lot of pressure on those, that offensive line. And then you've got the Vikings again away from home the following week which is going to be a similar sort of thing. You know, we're going to have to go out there and get rid of the ball quickly, rely on a running game. Our next home game is not going to be until we're in Chicago uh, for the, the Commanders game. In as the, long as they win that game, I'm fine. I'm sure. <laughs> you know, arguably, though, you're looking at the you're looking at the next four games. you get got Giants, Vikings, Commanders, and Patriots. I mean, you really want to be looking to win two of those at least. You know, and, and and arguably, you know, with the Vikings, you can never really tell. I always say with these divisional games, regardless of form, they could go anyway. But really what the Bears need to do is use next week to really change. If they're going to change the way they play, they need to use next week to do that um, and, and and just see where it goes from there. But I'm... I'm kind of at a loss at the minute because, I, as you say, I need to I need to go back and I need to watch the film. I need to see what was going wrong there. But for me, I think it's just what we've been saying for the last week or so. Change the way that you play, and hopefully that works. Um, do I have concerns about Luke Getze? A wee bit, a wee bit. And it's just from a point of view that I feel like if what he's doing doesn't work, he's not changing to anything else. He's sort of just going, well, we'll just run it. You know, we'll just run the ball. We'll just keep running the ball because obviously the passing's not working. Why is the passing not working? You know, should we be changing the type of plays that you're calling? You know, a lot of the a lot of the passes that he, that he does call, they aren't short and intermediate things. That they're all sort of longer. It feels anyway like that it's longer, but maybe it's because Fields is holding on to the ball too long. I don't know, but either way, you know that that's what needs to change for me: the offensive passing plan scrap that start again we're early in the season there's still plenty of time to make changes and make it a success fair enough it's not going to maybe work right away but a couple of weeks from now we're still only in week five you know so there's plenty of time to turn this thing around if we can yeah it's an interesting one because we just go back to that to that draft class even with that with the quarterback class where fields came out with and for a class everybody was convinced was going to be really really good it's it's tough sledding because obviously trevor lawrence is looking okay for for jacksonville this year 
Well, he looked pretty pedestrian last year. You had, obviously, Trey Lance, who hadn't played in almost two to three seasons just because of COVID and every, and then Jimmy Garoppolo playing last year, and now he's out for the year. You have Mac Jones, who may be out for the year. And, like, Zach Wilson, who, again, looks completely lost, and he's been injured at different points. It's tough. There's There could be a good amount, like, there could be a good amount of teams that are going to be looking for quarterbacks. You look at like Seattle don't look good. You've you've like the Falcons who have Marcus Mariota. And this is not an issue or this is not something that you want the Bears to have to be fixing. You would have preferred that Justin Fields is the guy and that's it. And you don't have to worry about it. Because look, if this team is good enough to win a couple of football games, you have to believe in Justin Fields because you're probably not going to get a guy that you can bring in that can be adequate in this offense. So what you need to see is you need to see and build an offense to where Justin can help move the ball and you can be successful. And Tony, this is something that you mentioned and it kind of set alarm bells in in my head anyway, was that this is a little bit on Getsy as well because we've seen some terrible quarterbacks be able to show that there's some sort of a passing game. Now, what ends up happening for those quarterbacks is eventually they make mistakes and they turn over the football. But we've seen some really bad quarterbacks that don't have the skill set that Justin Fields does have and then be able to at least show that they can pass the football or have some sort of passing attack. But this team hasn't shown to do that. And it's something that needs to improve. Look, I'm going to let each of you just kind of sum up with kind of your final thoughts for for this game. I think during the week, what we might do is we might do a, a show where we look at different plays in terms of the off 22 to where we can kind of see where this went wrong for Justin Fields, where it's gone right on other plays. But also, like just so people know, during the week in our preview for the Giants game, we will be joined by... Clay Harbour, that's going to be on Wednesday. We're going to be joined by one of the guys over on the giant side as well. So make sure that you do stick with us for that. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss some of the content coming this week. But lads, just to kind of conclude, just a line or two on, on today and kind of moving forward into, into next week. So Tony, I'll start with yourself, then Noel, and then Seth. We got the win. We're two and one. We're a winning football team. It's always good. Herbert was great. The running game was great. The offensive line were great. Defensively, we bounced back, played a lot better than we did last week. Those are all the positive things that have happened in this game. The negative, the passing game was atrocious. And Justin Fields looked lost. And that is a huge negative. <laughs> For all your, your, you're adding up all those huge lines of positives, that one negative of Justin Fields looked atrocious can outweigh that we need justin fields to turn that around somehow between now and next sunday um and i'm not saying making huge leaps but i'm just making improvements if he makes improvements we combine our running game and our defense we can win games if he doesn't do that i worry and that's what i need to look at next next week uh, against the giants and no yeah, look, a lot of what Tony said. Look, at the end of the day, we're 2-1, and, and that's always a positive when you win games. I mean, on defense, there, there are parts to be looking good at or to look at and to be happy with. Eddie Jackson seems to be a better player this year, the player we've been missing for a number of years. Uh, we have young players like Robinson, Brisker. Even Gordon came on today, who are looking good. And I think, that, as you said earlier, the Bears, they're, they're getting those punches in. They're getting the ball out there. And they're just generally, I think, trending up. Offense-wise, I think the O-line is a lot better than people gave it credit for earlier on. And they seem to be doing things. They're not perfect, but they are trending right in, in the right direction. Uh, the run game last week with Monty, we ran the ball down the Green Bay's throat. This week with Herbert, we ran the ball down Green Bay's throat. So that's good and positive. And again, look, negatives, yeah, it, it does. I hate to say, but it, it does all come back to the, to the passing game at the moment. And what that, that problem is, I liked what Tony said earlier, maybe they just need to dumb it down, not dumb it down, but you know, they need to bring it down a bit for fields, get them confident again, because they're not going to Simeon, that, that's not going to happen, they need to fix it with Justin Fields, um, Getty is definitely a question mark so far, it's only his third game call and plays, like, you know, we still don't know what he is, he could be great, he might not be, we're going to have to see how that develops, 
Um, one thing I'm not kind of happy with, which I noticed last week, and I think I know I have to watch it again, but this week, last week, Monty started really, really well. Then they went away from him for a long time and went to Ebner. This week, or sorry, they went to Herbert. This week, Herbert started well, got his touchdown. And I don't know if he was noticing that, but did he go away from him for a while to Ebner and before he went back to Herbert? I don't like that when a running back is hot. For some reason, he seems to go away from him after one series of, of good play and come back later. So I need to watch oh, it again uh, to make sure I'm not... I'll be honest with you. And it goes back to my point. And unfortunately, I don't... I hate this being kind of one of the ending parts of the show. Um, but there's a reason why I always say you don't pay running backs because I love David Montgomery and what he brings to this Bears team. But this is the third year in a row that he has gotten injured at some point. And if he misses football games, it's not that you're saying that he's not good enough and he's not worthy of the money that some people want to pay him. It's just the fact that he touches the ball as almost as much as the quarterback does, he's likely to get injured. The same will happen with Khalil Herbert. You keep bringing in running backs because you need to make sure that you have different guys that can come in. So if you, even if Khalil Herbert's having a really good good day, bringing in Ebner for plays here, plays there, you need to get different guys involved because unfortunately, let's say you come in next week and there's no Montgomery. If you only play Herbert, and then suddenly he gets injured and you you then have to bring in Ebner cold, well, then that's your rushing game is completely gone as well. So Oh, yeah, no, I, think, no, I get that. But he seems to go away from them for a long time. I, I understand you're kind of getting them the odd run here and there to keep them or to get them warmed up and to be ready if they need to. But he seems to actually, like I think for Montgomery, he went away from him for the rest of the half. And it was the second half before we saw him again. I just feel like he goes away from the hot hand a little too long. And then comes back to them. But look, again, I'd have to watch it. I, I could yeah, be overanalyzing it. It, but... it. it wasn't as noticeable, I don't think, today as it was last week. Last week, it was very obvious. Um, and people were questioning why he was doing that. Um, look, in an ideal world, the Bears have both Montgomery and Herbert. And we don't really care who who's rushing the ball. At least one of them is. Um, but I think the issue is going to be moving forward. I've always said it and people hate, hate it. Um I wouldn't pay David Montgomery. I love him. I think he's a really incredible player for this offense. Even though we have a lot of money, I still wouldn't pay him because he's a running back and he's going to get injured because it happens. when Khalil, If that were to happen, then Khalil Herbert would be the starter next year. Guess what? Khalil Herbert will probably get injured at some point in the season as well. You see it with every single running back, Ezekiel Lally, Christian McCaffrey. You see it with uh, Derek Henry, what was it, a year or two ago. All these guys get hurt. And event, okay, if they get through a season where they don't get hurt, they're going to have statistics that look unbelievable. But if they don't get hurt one year, they're going to get hurt the next year because that's the way it goes with the running backs. It doesn't matter how talented you are. Look at Saquon Barkley. He looked really good at the start of this year. He looked really, really good, what, two years ago? Last year was injury plagued. That's just what's going to happen. You can't base everything that you're going to do on offense on one player. It's what the Rams did for a while when they were focusing on Todd Gurley and what did Fangio do? He tried, he stopped that run. And at this point in time, Cooper cup wasn't kind of the breakout star that he is now, but you can force teams to kind of have to abandon the run because if it doesn't work and teams are honing in on it, you got to be able to pass the football. And look, that's why I've always said, it's not about passing more or running more. It's about being balanced on offense because when you're balanced on offense, the defense doesn't know what's coming. And that's a position that you want to be in when you're calling plays out there. If you're calling plays knowing that you're under pressure here and it needs to go for six, seven, eight yards, that's more difficult for a play caller than if you're in third and one, third and two, because the whole playbook is open for you. So I think I'll let you kind of wrap it up here and what's your kind of final thoughts of the game? Well, I think the positive that you can take away with Justin Fields is I don't know that he can play a worse game than he did. So I think, you know, there's no way he, well, yeah, I say not. that, <laughs> but you know what I mean? I don't foresee him playing that bad again. I mean, he completed eight, eight passes today short of them throwing the ball less. I don't see that happening again. 
Um, I'll have to, you know, obviously look through and see what kind of passing concepts they were using. I don't know. I'm a big fan of, you know, using mesh con concepts as much as possible. Um, just putting, you know, those defenders in a, in a point of conflict, you know, but I don't see him being as bad as he was. And if he goes out there today and instead of being eight for 17 is, you know, 12 for 20, I don't think the game's close. You know, I, I think it, if he plays a little bit better, it's so much easier for them to win. Not even great. I mean, obviously you want him great, but if he just plays average today, uh, it's probably not even a close game. I mean, you take away those two interceptions and – it's a, it's a whole different ball game. And obviously, I mean, he could have thrown more interceptions, but I, I don't foresee him playing worse next week. Um, I, I think I, I'm not exactly sure what kind of defense um, the giants run. If it's very, you know, zone heavy uh, the way lovey Smith is. And I noticed, you know, he tends to do better against man coverage than zone coverage at times. And I think the Giants do run a little bit more man, so I think there might be some more opportunities. Um, but if they play defense like they did today and get Jalen back, I feel very good about this defense moving forward because they've played two pretty darn good games and one not great game against a Hall of Famer and two very talented running backs. So I feel much better about the defense today than I did a week ago. And... I, I think we have some positives. Yes, it was a crappy win. It's not a win you want to see. Um, but, yeah, to be 2-1 and one and have the Giants up next and have uh, Daniel Jones, it's always a good uh, good way to keep the good momentum going. Yeah, look, at the end of the day, the Giants are good on defense. I think they've been much improved this year than in previous years. Again, they swarm to the football. They are... They're going to be aggressive. You can see that. That's just the way they like to play. But the interesting thing is, how did the Bears counteract that? And that's what's going to be important here. We've mentioned it before. Of the next four games, they're all winnable football games because each of the teams they play against have a deficiency that you can take advantage of. But unfortunately, unless Justin plays a little bit better, that's going to be really tough to come by. But as you said, Seth, maybe... This is the low point of the season. Hopefully, this is the low point of the season and he can kind of improve a little bit from here because, look, he's going to have to realize that if he doesn't, he's just going to get replaced. He might not get replaced this season, but there's no way in hell that if he plays like this for the remainder of the year that this coaching staff is not going to just go out and get somebody else. Even if they win a bunch of football games, they'll go out and they'll get somebody that can be okay in their system and they'll build it up from there or they'll have somebody in there that can genuinely compete with him for a starting role. If they don't win a lot of football games, I'm sorry, they're just going to draft somebody that they have scouted and who they believe in. That's just the way it's going to go. And this, this sucks because like I said, watching college football, Justin Fields is probably one of my favorite players over the last decade of watching college football. He was a fun quarterback to watch. He was an accurate quarterback. He was a leader. And it just seems like he's lost a little bit of that. I don't honestly I don't know about you guys and we're, we're gonna go through this kind of next week as we kind of look through more of the tape and can really dig into it he just looks like a guy that has lost all bit of confidence in himself and the offense I don't know if he trusts or trusts the offense that's being built around him here um maybe it's one of those things that there's so many people saying the offense sucks that sometimes the players believe it themselves it's it's tough to know what they're going to do going forward here, but look, there's still a lot of pretty poor teams on the schedule to where they'll get a couple wins. Like we've always said, build the systems, put the systems in place, and then after that you can decide whether specific individuals in those roles are up to the task. If they're not, you replace them at all levels, whether it's on defense, offense, special teams. That's what you're looking for this year. There's some positives, like we said, didn't play well today, didn't play well in week one, got two wins, weren't too far away against the Packers in, in week two, even though we lost that football game. You start off the season two and one, coming into the Giants where it's a very winnable football game. There are things to be positive about. There's still other teams that you look on the record that have also not played very, very good at the start of the season here. 
But the important thing is that the Bears have won today. They do start the season off two and one. If they can somehow come away next week and win that football game and start three and one, no matter how they play, it doesn't matter because you're starting off a season giving yourself an opportunity because at the end of the day, you can talk about performance, all that sort of stuff, but you need to have players buy into a new system. And then the only way, realistically, the best way to get a player's buy-in is show them that it works. And that's that's the next level, I think, is Justin Fields needs to buy into whatever Getsy is doing, and Getsy needs to help him as well. If those two can kind of come together here and get some sort of game plan in place to where Justin Fields can just be effective in this offense, I think then you're going to start to see Bears winning football games and feeling a little bit more convincing. Because if that was the case today, and Seth, you mentioned it, if he, they were, if he wasn't bad today and he was just okay, the Bears would have won this by probably 10 to 14 points because the Texans were not that good today. They proved why they are kind of missing talent out there. But look, we will be back throughout the week. We'll have a bunch of videos for you guys. We'll be looking at some of the all 22. We will be previewing the Giants game on Wednesday with Clay Harbour and one of the guys over from the Giants as well. So make sure that you do stick with us. We'll be live next weekend as well during or before and after the Bears football game. Myself, Tony, Noel, all the guys will be in Chicago for week six against the Washington Commanders. So make sure that you come out. If you're going to that game, come out, say hello. Um, we'll be talking to a bunch of fans there. We'll be getting videos and all that from our whole week in Chicago. So make sure that you stick with us. Make sure that if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. And until next time, bear down. Bear down. Bear down.